What's up guys, this is Pokemon Unbound Insane and we are going to battle Ivory for the third and final time here at Crystal Peak. For this battle, we have to choose three of our own Pokemon as well as using three of our rival's Pokemon. We're going for a deathless 6-0 victory here, so it's not gonna be easy. Again, this is level capped Insane, no sandbox. So here we go, Light of Ruin Admin Ivory, formerly known as Team Shadow Admin Ivory, is gonna lead with Incineroar and we send out Fralgator. Incineroar gets off the Intimidate, which is unfortunate because Fralgator is a physical attacker. Now. Incineroar almost always goes for fake out here on this first turn unless we switch to our ghost type Aegislash. Now does the unbound AI cheat? That is a question for another video. Either way, the best play here is to just take the fake out with Fralgator and let him switch into Mandibuzz. Even though we are intimidated, we read the switch properly and go for Ice Punch, which is going to be super effective. Fralgator is also holding the Nevermelt Ice to boost Ice type attacks, but despite that, Mandibuzz is still going to not take very much damage. Since Mandibuzz likes to go for Attract here, we're going to switch into our Gliscor, which is a female, and therefore Attract will fail. Now that we've got Gliscor on the field, we can go for the Toxic as well, which is a great counter to Mandibuzz considering how bulky it is. Mandibuzz likes to spam Roost when it gets in trouble too, so we need the poison to keep that in check. Mandibuzz fires back with a foul play, dealing about a quarter of health to Gliscor. Now we're going to go for a Protect Stall turn here. Again, we're going for a 6-0, zero death victory here, so we're going to play it nice and safe. Gliscor protects himself from the foul play, and Mandibuzz Buzz takes poison damage. Now that we've got the Toxic off, we want to get Gliscor out of there as soon as we can. Gliscor has a crucial role to play later on in the battle, so in order to conserve his health, we switch to Mamoswine. Mamoswine's gonna come in and now take the foul play, and it's gonna deal some significant damage, but better him than Gliscor. We won't really need Mamoswine for the rest of this battle, but he will come in handy here as he has an Ice type move. We go for the super effective Ice Fang, but it just falls short of the KO, just barely. And just in the nick of time, Mandibuzz gets off a roost, restoring about half of his health. This is why getting off the toxic on Mandibuzz was so important because if he tries to play this roost game with us, the poison is going to just outpace the amount of health that he can heal. Now, recognizing that it can't take another Ice Fang, Mandibuzz switches out into Landorus. Now, you might be thinking this is a bad switch considering Landorus is four times weak to ice, but he's got the Intimidate to lower our attack as well as a Yachi Berry. The Yachi Berry is going to significantly reduce the damage done by super effective ice type attacks, and the ice fang doesn't deal very much damage at all. At least we're able to deal some damage, but now that we've got Landorus out, we want to make the switch to Gliscor. This is a good switch because none of Landorus's attacks can deal very much damage to Gliscor at all. Recognizing this, Landorus goes for the U-turn to switch out, and whoever takes his place is going to have to eat a Toxic. But Ivory's no pushover and makes the correct play by switching to Mandibuzz. Toxic won't do anything now considering Mandibuzz is already poisoned. Now, we don't want to risk any more of Gliscor's health, and we know Mandibuzz is going to go for a roost here, so we're not going to play this game with Gliscor anymore. So we take this opportunity to switch into two cannons. As predicted, Mandibuzz goes for roost, restoring a bunch of health, and unfortunately, the toxic damage has reset, meaning that because Mandibuzz switched out, the toxic will take a few turns to start dealing more damage. Now, with our rival's two cannon here, utilizing the best tools that he gave us, we go for the Screech. The Screech connects, and this is going to harshly lower Mandibuzz's defense. Mandibuzz Buzz goes for Roost yet again, restoring him now to full health. But we should be all right here. We've set ourselves up in a good position. The Toxic is going to start dealing more and more damage now, as well as his defense is being lowered from the screen. So we can hit him hard here with a drill pack. It's not quite enough to one-shot him, but we do deal significant damage. Mandibuzz frantically tries to go for Roost again, and he's going to keep restoring health, but sooner or later, it's not going to be enough. Toxic is starting to deal more and more damage with each turn, and that just might bring him into range of a drill pack. We fire off one last drill peck and that's lights out from mandibuzz finally two cannon did take some residual damage from the rocky helmet but that's perfectly fine because we're not going to need two cannon for the rest of this battle now that's one down five to go as ivory sends out feromosa now we predict an incoming close combat feromosa's strongest move and switch to aegislash who is unaffected now this is where things can get messy because feromosa knows drill run we try to go for king shield to lower his attack but ivory instead switches out into its Cineroar. now this is a much worse matchup for Aegislash, and after the Intimidate as well, Aegislash will have his attack lowered. We go for King's Shield, but because the opponent made a switch, it failed. But this is perfectly fine the way King's Shield works. We can just go for it again with a 100% success rate. Incineroar goes for Flare Blitz to no avail, and will have his attack harshly reduced. Now that we've got his attack lowered, we're going to make the switch into our Incineroar answer, Vaporeon. Incineroar goes for Flare Blitz. He is minus two attack, and will deal not very effective damage, so Vaporeon takes 
takes it like a champ. Vaporeon is pretty bulky as is, also restoring some health with the leftovers as Incineroar takes recoil damage from the Flare Blitz. Now we're gonna go for a Hydro Pump here, hoping to deal some huge damage to Incineroar, but he instead switches out into Toxapex. Toxapex is now gonna take this Hydro Pump like it's nothing, and this is one of the strongest walls, one of the most annoying stall mods to deal with in the entire game. Vaporeon heals from the leftovers and Toxapex heals from the Black Sludge. Now remember before I said we needed to conserve Gliscor's health and save him for later? This is exactly what we need him for right here. We read him like a book and switch Gliscor into the incoming Toxin. And as you can probably guess, Gliscor has the ability Poison Heal. So this will heal Gliscor every turn rather than damaging him. Now Gliscor is a bit low on health from the previous altercation this is why we want to go for a protect stall turn to slowly heal as much health back as we can. It's a good thing we protected too because Toxapex went for Scald, which is super effective against Gliscor. Now, we're going to have to eat a Scald eventually, which is why it's so important that we restore as much health as we possibly can. Now, we go for Earthquake, and thanks to it being super effective and boosted by the held item Soft Sand, we're able to deal just over half his health and damage, and that's perfect. Toxapex fires back with the Scald, and this is scary. Gliscor gets hit hard, but hangs on. Remember, Remember, we're going for a Deathless 6-0 here, so if even one Pokemon faints, it's over. Now, Gliscor is faster here. We have an opportunity to land a finishing blow, so we go for the Earthquake, but Ivory switches out. Whoever comes in is going to have to eat an Earthquake, but unfortunately, Ivory brings out Landorus, who will immune the Earthquake due to being part Flying type and getting off the Intimidate as well. We aren't going to get off any damage here, but at least we'll have a couple turns to restore some health from the Poison Heal. Gliscor protects from the Rock Slide, and yet another turn of Poison poison heal restoring health bit by bit playing it extremely safe here taking as many stall turns as we can to restore as much health as possible we decide to go on the offensive here but landorus outspeeds and moves first with rock slide it's not going to deal very much damage but we get flinched unfortunately we'll just have to get him on the next turn landorus goes for rock slide again but he misses this time unable to use earthquake we go for toxic instead and it connects another protect toxic stall turn goes by as Landorus takes poison damage little by little, we restore health little by little. Since we can't use Protect two turns in a row, we're gonna attack this time. We get hit with the Rock Slide and fire back with the knockoff. Neither move dealing very much damage at all. But now that it should only take one more turn, just letting the Toxic do all the work for us. We use Protect one last time. Landorus goes for the U-turn, but it is blocked by the Protect. He's unable to switch out and will finally fall to the poison damage. Now, I'm not a huge fan of long, drawn out stally battles, but this was the correct play. This was the safest play. We want to keep our risk taking to a minimum and leave no room for misplays. Now, we're in a great position here. Gliscor has got almost all of his health restored as Ivory sends out Feromosa. Gliscor being four times weak to ice, we can predict an incoming triple Axel and switch an Aegislash to take the hit. Aegislash having insane defense and type resisting as well is going to take very little damage. Now, you're going to start to see the same pattern start to arise over and over again. Here, we want to play it safe once again and go for the King Shield just in case Feromosa decides to go for a Drill Run, but once again, he switches out into Incineroar. Incineroar is going to get off the Intimidate on Aegislash, but that's fine because we're not going to be attacking with Aegislash. We're going to keep going through the motions of the pattern here until we find an opening. So exactly like last time, the King Shield fails because Ivory made a switch out, but we're just going to go for it again. We go for King Shield and it works this time and staying in with Aegislash here baits Incineroar to try to use Flare Blitz because he wants to deal super effective damage but instead will have his attack harshly lowered. Now that we got the attack drop on him, it's safe to bring Vaporeon back out. Just like last time, Incineroar goes for Flare Blitz but being minus 2 attack and Vaporeon type resisting, it's not going to deal very much damage. Incineroar takes some recoil damage as Vaporeon restores a bit of health with the leftovers. Now we're going to click Hydro Pump here just like we did last time but if you remember last time in Incineroar switched out into Toxapex, but because Toxapex is too low on health currently, he doesn't want to make the switch. It's not quite enough to take him out, but we do deal huge, super effective damage. Incineroar retaliates with Dark Lariat, and Vaporeon takes it like it's nothing. We're starting to see chinks in the armor here. Ivory likes to switch a lot, but as we take his Pokemon down one by one, he's running out of options little by little. But here, Ivory finally decides to make the switch to Toxapex, who comes back out with way more health than we thought he had from last time, which can only mean that Toxapex 
has the regenerator ability. But we're still gonna be able to break the pattern here because we can make the switch to Gliscor, and with Ivory having none of her flying type Pokemon left, we'll be able to hit Toxapex with Earthquake because it doesn't have any of its switch out options left. So here we go, we're gonna go for a finishing blow here. We outspeed and attack first with Earthquake. Gliscor is holding a soft sand and it's gonna be super effective, but it's still not enough to finish off the Toxapex. So here we go, Toxapex is gonna start with the recover spam and he restores half of his health. And this is exactly the reason why we need soft sand on Gliscor to make that Earthquake deal just over half health so he can't out heal us with the recover. Gliscor really is a great counter to Toxapex here as we've got knockoff as well and we get rid of that pesky black sludge. Now Toxapex can no longer passively heal from the black sludge every turn but he can still go for recover which he does to restore his health back to full. But that's fine we've got him right where we want him as we attack again with Earthquake. Earthquake is going to deal more damage than Toxapex can heal with recover. However this turn Toxapex decides to go for the scald but by this point we've restored so much health that Gliscor will be fine. Because Toxapex went for scald last turn this is checkmate all we have to do is click earthquake because toxapex has nobody left to switch out to not giving him a chance to recover we outspeed and attack first with earthquake finishing off the toxapex once and for all that's why it was so important that we first got rid of landorus and mandibuzz both of ivory's flying types so toxapex was unable to make a safe switch out and was forced to take the earthquake and we're going to start to see a domino effect here now that toxapex is gone incineroar will have nowhere to run versus vaporeon but we've got Ferramosa to deal with with first and like clockwork he's gonna go for a triple axle versus gliscor so we make the correct read and switch to aegislash who will type resist aegislash takes the triple axle like it's nothing and now this is where things get hairy because Ferramosa is much more likely to go for a drill run here with half of ivory's team fainted Ferramosa is much less likely to switch out like it has the past two times we go for king's shield and it's successful Ferramosa did in fact not switch out and he goes for the drill run as predicted aegislash is protected and Ferramosa will have his attack harshly reduced. Now it would be relatively safe to use Aegislash to deal with Ferramosa here but the thing is we need Aegislash to have as much health as possible for later on and you'll see why in just a bit. So we want to play as safe as possible here and make the switch to Toucan. However it looks like Ivory is going to make a switch of his own as Ferramosa retreats and out comes Incineroar. Incineroar is going to get off the Intimidate on Toucan and this Incineroar is actually scary because we're normally used to dealing with minus two attack Incineroar resulting from the King Shield. So without the king shield debuff this incineroar is going to hit hard we switch to vaporeon predicting a flare blitz but he goes for fake out instead which is even better for us vaporeon takes the fake out like it's nothing and we are faster here so we go for the hydro pump incineroar doesn't switch out this time without toxapex no longer being an option the hydro pump connects and it's enough to finish off incineroar once and for all slowly taking down ivory's team one by one while all six of our pokemon remain alive with only two pokemon left Ferramosa comes back out to play so here we're going to predict a close combat, Ferramosa's strongest move, and we're gonna switch into Aegislash who will immune it. Ferramosa goes for close combat as predicted, and Aegislash is unaffected. We're gonna get our last bit of health restored from the leftovers, and we're gonna need all the health we can get because it's up to Aegislash to take us home from here. We go for King Shield right away, Ferramosa tries to go for Drill Run, but Aegislash is protected, and Ferramosa will have his attack harshly reduced. And we're gonna need that because we're gonna take a hit here eventually, we have to make a move, we can't just protect every turn. We click Iron Head but we're slower and Ferramosa attacks with Drill Run while Aegislash is still in the shield stance and because of its insane defense Drill Run doesn't deal very much damage but it's time to make a move here Aegislash transforms into the blade stance and attacks with Iron Head. Ferramosa is not very bulky so this should deal huge damage but unfortunately Ferramosa does have the focus stat but that's no problem for Aegislash all we have to do here is click Shadow Sneak and that's GG for Ferramosa now Ivory always saves the best for last the scariest Pokemon for last and it is a huge threat it has the potential to wipe our entire team and none other than alakazam enters the battlefield and as you could probably guess it is a mega alakazam this thing is so insanely strong it outspeeds everyone on our team and can potentially one shot everyone as well this is why we need aegislash to have as much health as possible burning a stall turn with the king shield it's gonna buy us some time getting us as much leftovers heals as possible as well as changing aegislash back into the shield stance we need aegislash to be in the shield stance to even stand a chance at surviving a shadow ball from mega alakazam so here we go it all comes down to this turn 
We go for Night Slash, but we're gonna move second. First, we're gonna have to deal with the Shadow Ball. Will Egg Slash be able to tank it? Even being super effective, Egg Slash takes the Shadow Ball like a total boss. Lucky we dodged the crit there too, because if Egg Slash fainted, we'd have to start all over. But now it's our turn to attack. Egg Slash fires back with the super effective Night Slash, and it's enough to one-shot the Mega Alakazam. And there you have it, folks. Light of Ruin Ivory, 6-0, zero death victory. GG. Shout out to all you guys that made it to the end. I know this was a long one, but thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the video. Like the video. It's good for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for next week where we battle Hoopa and Mega Rayquaza on top of Crystal Peak. It's gonna be a good one. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.